Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. In my last video, I discussed about how we can use Amazon state machines to create a microservices orchestration. But in my last video, I did not cover how you can invoke a state machine in a real life scenario. So today I'm going to cover a couple of ways we can trigger a step function in a real life scenario. So this was the step function that I had. And if I go into the edit mode, you can see we had a create product, then wait, and then get product SKU, and then end. In an ideal scenario, this is something will either be called from another microservice or from an HTTP API. So in today's video, I'm going to cover both the scenarios. So first, I'm going to cover a scenario where this particular call is made or the call to this AWS step function is made through another microservice. And in this case, the microservice is a Lambda, though it can be any .NET Core service, it doesn't have to be Lambda because what we are going to use inside of the Lambda are pure step function capabilities. So to do that, what I did is using the .NET new CLI command, I created a new Lambda called inbox step function and I used the Lambda.mt function template. After the function is created in the NuGet package, I added AWS SDK .step functions NuGet package. Once I added the NuGet package, what I did is in the default function handler that comes with the template, I created a new instance of Amazon step function client. And then what I did is I used the step function client object dot start execution async to start execution of a step function. And the step function async takes a step function request model, which is part of Amazon dot step function dot model namespace. And then here for the input, I pass the incoming input as is. For the name, I just created a new GUID. The name is the name of the execution, which has to be unique for every request. And then finally, for the state machine ARN, I pass the ARN of the state machine. And finally, I'm just logging the status code from the response, whether it was a success or failure. So this is the Lambda that I created. Now, if I go back, this Lambda is doing nothing but calling this product state machine or step function. And if I go into the workflow studio, the create product step is nothing but calling another Lambda, which is create product Lambda and get product SKU is calling another Lambda, which is get product SKU Lambda. I covered this in my previous video. If you have not watched it, I'll suggest you go and watch it. Now, these are the two Lambda function, which is create product and get product SKU. Create product is just creating a record into this product table. Right now it is going to be empty. And then the get product SKU reads this bottle.txt file from this particular S3 bucket and just returns the response. These are two extremely simple Lambda which are triggered by this step function. And then finally, I uploaded this invoked Lambda function, which I just showed is used for executing the step function. And here, if I see these logs are empty now, but once I invoke, these logs will be filled up. So let's go now, go to the invoke step function, go to the test, and here I'm going to pass request for the step function. Now, if you remember the request for the step function is an object which takes name, quantity and price. Now here I'll pass the same JSON object, but as a string, because if you remember this Lambda function input is a string and the same input is just passed across to the actual step function. So I am passing this JSON in a string format. That's why I use the escape character. Now I'm going to click on test and then I can see the test is successful the return is okay and if I get into the DynamoDB I'll see a new record for bottle and then if I get into the invoke step function I can see a new log and the log send status is okay this is the message that I'm logging status is okay if I go into the step function I can see a new record is created right now as of right now and this record is what being executed and we can see everything is successful here. So that's one way of invoking step function, which is from another microservice, as I mentioned, which can be either a plain .NET Core microservice or it can be .NET Core Lambda, which is calling the step function. 
The other way to execute is directly through API Gateway. Now for that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a REST API. And as you can see, the REST API works with Lambda, HTTP, and AWS services. So I'm going to click on Build. Then I'm going to select a new API. And I'm going to say here, Step function API and then I'm going to click on create API and as you can see I selected rest here for restful API now inside that I got the API now I'll say create a method and I'm going to select post because I will have request body and then here instead of lambda function I'm going to select AWS service for the region I'm going to select US East 2, that's the region. For AWS service here, I'm going to select the step function. And then for the HTTP method, I'm going to select post. And for the action, it is very important that we put the name of the action as start execution start execution as you can see here also start execution is name of the as you can see in the definition here start execution is the internal name for this call so we are going to put a string representation of that so start execution this is very important this is not a random name this is the start execution because we are going to invoke the start execution of a step function then for the role i already have a role it's called api gateway step function role i'm going to copy the role here for the time being i just say it step function full access so that i can execute the step function and for logging cloudwatch logs and then i'll go back to the api for the role arn i'm going to paste it and I'm going to save it. Once saved, I can test the function from here or I can deploy it. So first let's test from here, make sure everything works. So I'm going to test. Now before that, let me delete this record so that we can see a new record has been created. Let's go here. And for the input, it has to be step function related input. Now, as you have seen, we have not provided the name of the step function or ARN anywhere. It's because it will be part of the request and this is very critical to remember. So here is the input. The input object first property is input, which is the string representation of the JSON object that we want to pass to the step function. Second one is name, which is the name. And as you can see, it is exactly same as here input name state machine ARN. So input name state machine ARN. The name is nothing but as I said a unique name. So I'm giving here test 001. Finally the ARN. And now if I click on test since I already have test 001 test from earlier I have to change it. So let me change it to test 002 and execute. As you can see it says test 001 already exists. So now let me test again. This time we can see that it executed it properly. And if we go to DynamoDB and refresh, we see that the record is created. And now if we go into the CloudWatch and we look into the log, we can see a log is created right now and it shows the execution of the step function. As well as if we come and refresh here, we'll see a new entry for test 002. And here we can see everything is showing up and it's working as expected. Now what we can do is this is not how we are going to test in real life. So we can just go ahead and deploy this API and we can create a new stage. Let's call it as prod and let's deploy this. Once it is deployed, you can see uh, API URL is created. I'm going to copy paste this URL and then I am going to paste it in postman and then in the header I am going to say the content type content type is application JSON and then in the body I am going to paste the exact same request as before and I am going to change this to test 003 and I am going to post this 
and once we post we can see that it's executed successfully and if we go back to the step functions we can see test 003 and it is succeeded and then DynamoDB because the record is already there it is just going to update it so we are not going to see any difference here but we can see from step function it is working as expected. This goes to show you two different ways of executing step function. If you are trying to execute the step function for an external facing API then the API gateway method is not really very helpful because you have to pass the error and all you don't want your client to know all this so this doesn't work very well but if it's an internal facing API then of course you can use this. Otherwise, you can create another lambda which will internally invoke the step function and that lambda can be exposed through API Gateway. And I already covered a video on how to expose lambda through API Gateway. I'll provide the link in the description. You can take a look into it, but that's the way you will do it. So these are the two main ways to execute step function in a real life scenario. Again, since we are using Amazon Step Function Client, this can be also used in a .NET Core or .NET 5 API, which is going to run in a Docker container in a EC2 Linux inside of an AWS ECS cluster. So you can do that as well. This is all I wanted to cover for today's video. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you are new to my channel and you think you are getting value out of my channel, please subscribe to my channel. And thanks so much for watching this video.